What is up friends and welcome back to my channel where in today's video I'm taking you through my entire pool day routine. So sit back, relax, get ready to learn and as always cue the intro, let's get into it. disclaimer at the beginning of this video I don't show any of my warm-up routine warm-up exercises this is just strictly my workout routine itself um, if you want to find out any mobility or warm-up exercises links as always in the description down below go check them out and come out of your own routine but anyway let's get into it so we're starting off with again our compound movement this one being a deadlift. Now, out of the three compound movements that I do, well, four, overhead press, deadlifts, squat and bench, deadlifts is becoming my favourite by far. This is the exercise where I can use the most amount of weight and pull the most amount of weight. Um, again, form with this is everything because this is such a taxing movement, being a compound movement. Any use of overweight or any breakdown of form can really end in some serious back pains. So the whole idea of it is to keep your knees pointing in, well not pointing in, if they come in you're bowing in, that's not what you want to do, is to keep your back straight, don't let your back arch, um, come down with a slope bend in your knees and really push your hips backwards. The whole, the key to this movement is, is bringing your hips backwards, keeping your chest up, keeping that back straight and really driving through the heels of your feet and bringing your hips into the bar rather than just coming up um, with your back straight. You kind of want to have full contact with your body at the whole, the whole entire way. So bring it up your shins, pull it in to up your thighs and bring your hips into the bar itself. The next exercise we moved on to was a pull up. Now tips with a pull up. It's when a lot of people do them, they start off in a hanging position and instead of retracting their shoulder blades and bringing their chest up to really engage their lats, they just come from a hanging motion, hands in line with their head and they just pull up. Now, it's essentially a pull up but it's not really engaging your lats as much as you want. The whole idea of a pull up is to engage your lats. So at the beginning of this clip here actually you can see right now, I start in the hanging position, bring my shoulders back, chest up and then I then begin at the pull up movement itself. All I'm doing is I'm not coming all the way with my chest touching the bar. I'm keeping tension on it by slowly coming just before lockout and then back down. And I'm fully locking my arms out to really get a stretch on the lats and then bring myself back up. Next exercise we jumped on after that was a cable row seated on the floor. Now with this movement again, Everything's about range of motion. The more range of motion you can get, the more muscle fibers you're gonna break down and tear. Now, I see a lot of people in the gym do a cable row like this, but they don't lean forwards. Now, there's an issue with that, I understand, whereas if you lean forwards and you unengage your shoulders, you begin to not do the movement correctly with correct form. So the best way I always do this is when you're in the position, retract your shoulder blades. When you're coming in to do the movement, instead of your movement, your range of motion being from here, pulling it back and back out. Come forwards, keeping your shoulder blades engaged, retracted and engaged. Come back, pull and lean back as I do here as you can see. And it will really increase that range of motion in turn, breaking down more muscle fibres. Um, and the pump that you get from it is incredible. Now with this I'm stacking on the weight with I think about 67 or 69 kilos. This is something I can really go heavy with and control on the form correctly. Um, hand placement on the grip is completely down to you. I always hold the top of it with my thumbs over the bar and then I bring it into my lower abs. The next movement we jumped on after that is a incline row on a bench. This is something that I haven't really done much of. I've only just recently started getting into it maybe the, like, the last one or two weeks but I'm, I'm slowly becoming to beginning to love this exercise. It's incredible. Um, with rows, a lot of people, they will start off their movement, they will start off a row and they will come up and straight back down in one vertical line. The whole idea of it being a row is to start off at um, with the dumbbell in front of your head, so in front of your chest, and to row the dumbbell up, bringing your elbow near enough as far into like, near your arse as you can get. So as you can see here, I'm not bringing the weight up and down, up and down. I'm slowly arching my arm up 
and really squeezing, squeezing my back at the top of the movement. The best way to do it is imagine someone's putting your elbows back with a bit of string, not up. So we done, again, reps, sets, is the exact same for everything um, as every other workout. Deadlifts, I did four sets of eight reps. Um, Pull-ups, I did four sets of eight reps again because it's another compound movement. Um, and all my isolation exercises, regardless, I always do four sets of 12 reps. But I've began to, since I've changed my split up, I've began to implement rear delts onto my back days. Um, and the best way I find to train my rear delts is through endurance training, so lowish weight and high reps. So these are two reverse pec decks to target that muscle. I'm doing anywhere between 15 and 20 reps. Um, hand placement is completely down to you. I do a variation of both um, palms facing down and then grabbing the bar itself and bringing it out. No hand placement is going to work the muscle better. Um, but what I do find is if I'm grabbing the bar itself, it involves a little bit more forearm. So I have to really focus on a mind-muscle connection between me and my rear delts. It just helps me concentrate a little bit more. So again, we did four sets of 15 to 20 reps on these. I think I hit 20 reps on both of them. So next week, the weight needs to go up. And... Um, in terms of the chair height, it's completely down to you, whatever suits you best. Now, I think that was a total of five back movements. After that, we move on to our bicep portion of the workout. Now, what we started off with is spider curls. This, again, is something I've only been doing for the last maybe two or three weeks. Um, ever since changing up my split, I decided to do more exercises that I haven't tried. Um, just to change up my workout, not because they have any more beneficial, um, not because they're more beneficial than any of the other exercises that I've done, but because I was getting a bit bored with my routine, hence why I changed it up. Spider curls, the whole idea of this, lay on a bench, bring your arms down, you want your arms slightly in front of you, so if I'm laying on the bench, instead of having my arms in the over my shoulder, bring it slightly forward to keep tension on the bicep, all I'm doing, shit. All I'm doing is bringing the dumbbell up until I get a good contraction. I'm not bringing it all the way up because at that point I'm going to be moving my shoulder blades forward and completely unengaging my biceps. I'm really focusing on form here. Now, typically I would do 10 to 12 reps on this exercise, but the weight that I wanted to use, which was about 17.5 kilos, was taken. So I jumped the weight down to 15 kilos, but I put the reps up to about 15 to 20 just at the last exercise. Um, and I just focused on really getting a good pump with this exercise. Um, I controlled the negative the whole way down. The contraction part of the movement, again, was controlled. And at the bottom of the movement, as you can see here, I'm flexing my tricep to get a full extension of the bicep, again, to tear more muscle fibers. Again, guys, you want to train smarter as well as harder. So really know what you're training and how to train them correctly. Now this, this is an exercise that I only did this workout, and let me tell you, I want to start incorporating it a lot more. It was good. I rarely ever do dumbbell curls in terms of ex in terms of an exercise. I've had very bad experience with them. I mean, not only that, but they just get boring. And my form, where I spent a year or two training and doing this exercise, majorly, uh, a lot of my form was broken down. So I've had to strip my weight all the way back down to only 10 kilos alternating single arm dumbbell curls so all I'm doing is keeping my shoulder blades retracted pointing my chest out I'm really controlling the way up and what I'm not doing is swaying too much to either side to get the dumbbell up what you'll see is when people do a lot of these exercises they'll do a curl but they'll really push their body down into it to bring that weight up and essentially they're just limiting their range of motion so the, the rep is easier to do if you've only got this much of a weight to do it's a lot easier than coming all the way up um, but again, I only got one exercise, uh, one clip of that exercise because my phone died, unfortunately. But again, we did 20 reps of about four sets of that exercise as well. So again, we're going to bring this video to an end right here, guys. I'm sorry on Friday I wasn't able to get out a video in the end, but I'm all moved now, I'm all settled in. So expect the five Fridays, top five fitness myths this Friday.
and Wednesday I have my entire push day routine coming out which I'm actually recording today which I can't wait to do and get out to you guys and then the following week after or week after that because I'm at a festival at some point soon um, I'll be re releasing a video to explain my split what I do with these certain exercises how I structure my split and pretty much how you not should be structuring yours but how to structure a workout routine for yourself so Stay tuned for that and I'll see you on Wednesday.